Hey everyone, I'm Steve with Grow Time, and we're just going to do a quick tour of our property and what we have going on here and what all we're growing. So we have new babies coming in May. And then Amelia's future project here in the next month is to build us a nice chicken coop here to raise our babies up and let them grow. It takes about four to six months for them to start laying eggs. So they'll live here for about four to six months and then we'll move them into the bigger coop and we will butcher those chickens and have some organic chicken for dinner. Except hey hey, we'll keep hey hey. <laughs> Once you name it, you can't eat it. Nope, it's a rule. <laughs> so stay tuned and check out our newest chicken coop coming soon. All right, so over here we have some lemon balm and some little pepper sprouts are sprouting up. We try to keep our herbs and things that we use every day in the kitchen along the house here so it's easy to come to. And then this, I'm not really sure how this got here. Amelia, do you know what this is? That's a lima bean, and you did this at school. Wait, where's the eye? Oh. And then these are potatoes. Uh, we start the potatoes at the bottom of the pot, and as the potatoes grow up, we fill it in with dirt. And when it's all full and the plant continues to grow, this one's further along, and it'll grow and grow until the plant dies off. And once the plant dies off, then you tip the bucket over and you harvest all your potatoes. These are green onions, They're just regular onions. They call them green onions when you harvest the leaves and just eat the leaves. Eventually they will bulb out. I haven't had any luck with them bulbing yet, but for now we just harvest the leaves and eat them and cook them. Then we have cilantro over here and culantro. Culantro grows a lot different than cilantro. Cilantro will bolt and turn into coriander and once it flowers, it changes the whole taste of it. Then we have Cuban oregano, which is a succulent, very easy to grow. I put this in the pot, it was real small, and it doesn't t require a whole lot of water and tastes really good. This here is parsley and some chives. Then over here we have our ladyfinger potatoes. They're real small, almost like Yukon Golds. This one just started out. So as these plants continue to grow up, we'll keep filling them in with dirt and burying them until they get all the way to the top. And then we'll just let them continue growing until they die off. And then we got chamomile here. And this will send out beautiful flowers. And you harvest the flowers and you use them in teas. You could probably also cook with them as well. And then you have here echinacea and this is a very slow growing plant we planted it about three months ago and that's how big it is echinacea also you harvest the flowers and you can blend it up and put it in juices or you can make teas with it it's an immune system booster it's very good for you now are you going to show us the girls we have our chickens over here Amelia's named one of them. Which one did you name? The white one. Hey. That's Hey Hey there, the white one. <laughs> this is our chicken coop that we built. Me and Amelia built this. And then this guy here just sprouted up all on its own. We didn't plant it. And we just kind of let it go. And now it's about nine feet tall and full of tomatoes. And then what do we have growing at the bottom over here, Amelia? Some cucumbers and this is a little sunflower that hopefully will put out a nice big sunflower and we'll harvest the seeds and use it to feed the girls and then we have a strawberry plant you can see the little strawberry right there starting to grow 
And then this is, uh, Amelia, which one is this? It's a lime tree. We have a lime. Yes, we do. We have a little guy right there. And then this is our lemon tree. These have been growing pretty well. When we put them in the ground, they're only about this tall. And I just kept trimming them back and let them get real bushy. And now I'm just going to kind of let them get bigger. And then back here we have our tangerine. It's all starting to flower. Hopefully the bees will come along and, and pollinate them. You won't get any fruit if you don't have bees because the bees have to actually take the pollen and pollen the, pollenize the female flowers in order to get the fruit. And here we have our avocado tree which was sprouted seven years ago from a seed. And now this year it's finally given us some fruit. Come on back here and we'll see our garden beds that we have. These are our garden beds. We have two 45 foot long garden beds, about three feet wide. Uh, right here we have all of our salad greens. Uh, these are a real bitter variety that we don't really like to eat, so we keep trimming them back and feeding them to the chickens. And then we have some New Zealand spinach, and this grows more like a vine, and it'll send out little fingers and just creep along the ground and it's almost like a succulent. The leaves are real thick and tender and juicy. And then we have some long leaf lettuce or long leaf spinach sprouting up here. And then these here are golden collards. They were hybridized by a man in Asheville, North Carolina. He noticed. Yogi! What are these, Mila? Golden collards. These are golden collards. A man in North Carolina uh, discovered that one of his collard plants were different and they're more lighter and tenderer collard. So he singled it out and started reproducing them and started this line of golden collards. You can cut them up and put them right in your salad and you don't have to cook them. They're delicious. And what do we have growing all over the place here? Um, green beans. Some green beans. We got all kinds of different green beans. I keep trying different varieties and different types of beans to see what grows best. And some some varieties grow better than others. And you just gotta try different types and see what works best for you. What works good for one person might work differently for somebody else. And then this here is kale. And this is one of our favorite treats to grow. We put it in everything. We put it in our eggs. We cook with it for dinner. The chickens enjoy it very well, and it, it does really good growing. And then in the middle, I have some little sprouts popping up. I have broccoli and some small kale over here. I try to fill in the gaps so as the plants grow and get to the end of their life, they have new ones coming up in between the middle. What do we have over here, Maya? Some catnip. For baby girl. Yeah, catnip for baby girl. Some oregano. And this one, this one smells like Christmas. Do you know what this one is, Amelia? This is rosemary. It's really good in some chicken or potatoes. And then we have our broccolis here. And we've already harvested the main heads of broccoli. And every time you harvest the main head, it sends out all these little shoots and then the shoots don't get as big but you can harvest them and eat them and then they keep sending out more and more shoots so just because you harvest your main broccoli head doesn't mean you have to get rid of the plant you can keep coming back and eating the little guys that send out the sides these are some little green beans <laughs> Got green so beans everywhere, everywhere. Yeah, I try to put green bean plants all in the gaps because they don't take up a whole lot of space. And the more green beans, the better. These here are just regular collards. They're much thicker and denser. These are the types that you would actually cook and boil or, or make soups with or, or boil with some ham hocks. And then we have this little guy here. Who planted this guy? <laughs> That was mm -hmm. Amelia. She went around and just put basil seeds all over and this guy sprouted up on its own. 
And we have some cabbage here that we're gonna eat tonight with St. Patrick's Day. And then this cabbage back here, this one got too much water and it burst and explode. When they get too much water, they split and then they start to get all nasty. So this one we'll, we'll clean up and give it to the chickens. And then here we have our eggplant. And this plant was just a little guy when we put it in the ground. And this was the first eggplant that came down and it got real long, real quick, and now it's starting to fill out. And this one kind of spilled out right away, and now it's starting to get longer. So everything grows differently. I think Amelia wants to show us the carrots. We've harvested most of them. But I think she's going to pull one out so Here's can... Anaya, um... <laughs> Another basil that popped yeah. over. Why don't you go ahead and pull a carrot up? Yeah. Any of them. Pick a good one. I don't see How about that one? That one looks big. Oh. <laughs> oh, this one is actually little. Yeah, nice little carrot. It's a little one. These are called shortened sweets. We went with the shortened sweets because we don't have real deep soil and I have had bad luck with them hitting rocks and spidering out. So I tried this variety and they're doing much better this year. I think also another issue I've ran into is transplanting them too late. If you wait till the sprout is too big and you transplant it, it almost sends it into shock. And I think that causes an issue with the uh, carrots becoming deformed. So next year I'm gonna try planting them more spaced out and not have to transplant them as much. Then right here we have our onions. And every year I keep trying onions and they don't seem to bulb out for me, but I keep trying it and, and hoping to have success this year. That's the main thing. If you don't succeed right away, and just keep trying it and try something new. Try a different spot, try different soil, and never give up. And right here we have our romaine lettuce. Uh, we've already harvested one batch of romaine and it bolted. And once it bolts, it starts to flower. And when it does that, the lettuce turns bitter. So then you just chop it and give it to the chickens or start again and back here we have pepper plants these were sprouts given to me they're real small when I planted them and they're just little small uh, hot peppers almost like a uh, like a Tabasco pepper and back here this I didn't plant either this just sprouted up all on its own and what is this Amelia a pear tomato a pear a yellow pear they call it it's delicious. Even though it's yellow, it tastes just like a regular tomato. You gonna eat one? I can find one. Here, what about this guy? That one's not good. Okay. <laughs> there you go. That's a good one. Best thing about playing in the garden is you get hungry, you just pick a snack off the bush and eat it. And back here we have more parsley and culantro. I tried growing the same things in different spots and see what does best in different locations, different sunlight, different water amount. Back here we have tomato plants. This one isn't doing as well back here. Maybe too much shade. And we have some little grape tomatoes down there. And that is a yellow cayenne pepper. It's been a real small plant. It hasn't gotten real tall, but it does put out quite a bit of peppers. And we have another eggplant. This one's got a nice long guy. It's starting to fill out here. And then this one, I don't know what he was doing. He just wrapped himself around that thing and <laughs> holding on for dear life. <laughs> and then this is a pole bean. I planted two types of pole beans. I can't remember which one this is, so stay tuned for another video to find out what that might be. And then here is just a regular red cayenne pepper. And this guy started real small and started putting out some cayennes and then he just kept growing and growing and slowly creeping his way up. So I'm gonna have him just keep growing all the way up. This cattle gate here works very well for growing anything that gets tall. 
as you can see here, the tomatoes, they grow up this cattle gate and they just they lock their leaves into it. You don't even really have to tie it up much. Here and there, you might tie it up and the leaves kind of just lock themselves in and brace themselves. And here we have more green beans growing and cucumbers here. Tried cucumbers here, a different spot, see if they do better. They seem to like it better in this spot than over by the chicken coop. That's the main thing, you just try different locations and see what does good where. And these are some little cherry tomatoes. This I did not plant. This actually popped out the side of a bucket. <laughs> And I just figure I'll set it up over here and just let it grow up the cattle gate. Do you know what this is, Amelia? Uh, no. Smell it. It's mint spearmint. It's really good to put in your teas or make some fancy drinks with. Smell good. Mmm, mm, that smells good. And then here we have our bell peppers, and every year I keep trying bell peppers, but I don't seem to succeed very well. The plants don't get very big and don't do a whole lot, but this year is actually the best year we've had. And we got a few bell peppers, even though they're very small. So I'll try again next year and hopefully just keep getting better at it. The main thing I've noticed with bell peppers is they start to form white fly underneath the leaves. There's some and they suck the juice out of the plants and eventually will kill the plants. So I just use a simple neem oil and Dawn dish soap mixture to spray on them and keep them off of it. They really like the bell peppers, I think because maybe it's a sweeter plant. They don't touch the hot peppers <laughs> I wouldn't at touch all. them either. That's scotch bonnets. This is a little bell pepper we got growing here. It's not real big, but they taste good. This is a banana pepper plant. It's kind of struggling. I'm not sure why. I've tried giving it some organic fertilizer and it's not really making it jump back up. This is a cubanelle pepper plant. The peppers are green right now and then they'll turn red eventually and that's when you like to pick them. And this guy here, this is the scotch bonnet. And I do not recommend eating these raw or not really sure how I recommend to eat them because they're very hot. We're going to try making a hot sauce. We have a mango tree that hangs over our fence there. So we're going to try making some mango habanero hot sauce. And then here, this is bok choy. This is a Chinese cabbage. It's really good with stir fries. It actually is real porous, so it soaks up any flavors that you cook with. And then these, what are these, Amelia? Green beans. More green beans. We got green beans everywhere. <laughs> Every I like to plant as many green beans as I can. So when you harvest them, you've got a lot of green beans to go pick and you eat them. For all you can, they're delicious especially when you pick them. We have some more tomato plants. This is a blackberry vine here. It's just been wrapping its way around. We haven't had a whole lot of large blackberries yet, but maybe as the plant continues to get bigger, we'll get some bigger blackberries. And this is lavender. It produces these beautiful purple flowers, and you can use the flowers in teas and where you can make fragrance or soaps with it and it smells really good. What do you got? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you eating a green bean? <laughs> this is a jalapeno plant. He's not doing as great as I'd like. I'm not sure why. The only thing I can think of is location. Maybe he's not getting enough sun. This is a mango plant. The mango fell and hit the ground and started growing all on its own so I figured I'd put it in a bucket and just see what it does and this is how big it's gotten and then back here of course we have more green beans we love our green beans they don't do as well in this spot I think because it doesn't get enough sun but hey even if we get a handful of green beans more green beans the better 
Amelia, yeah, yeah. can you show us where the bananas are? Oh. Way up. Yep. Way up there's some there. bananas up there. The banana tree, we planted this about four years ago. And this is the first year that we're getting bananas out of this. And this is our chicken house. Double barn doors. We can open it up. They even built the girls a window mm -hmm. so they can stare at the garden that they can't eat. I like to make it double doors so it's easier to clean. Got some eggs. We got one of them funny eggs too. Yeah. <laughs> this egg here, I'm not sure why the chicken lays it like this, but it seems to be calcium buildup. She lays it real funny, as if I give if I give them oyster shells, then it gets even more bumpier. Yep, they're wondering what we're doing. Hi, girls. A little green bean snack for them. They like their window. They can look outside. And See what's going on. Just found a little green bean clipping. <laughs> well, thanks for checking out what we have here and be sure to follow us on Instagram and follow our website. We'll be posting more videos and blogs and anything I learn I'll share with you guys. And Hopefully see y'all grow some stuff on your own. <laughs>